Today, we're going to learn the secrets to becoming financially independent. What does it mean to be your own central bank? And how can you do it? If you want to know, just stay tuned to find out. Hey, what's up, Lambo? What are you doing, brother? Oh, finally. That's great, man. That's great. You're finally getting that money out of the bank. You're finally learning how to become your own bank. Great job. Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to another episode. I know, it feels like such a long time since I've been standing here in front of a camera talking to you guys about stuff. And again, there's a lot of things to talk about, literally. Um, you know, there's a, a government takeover happening in Haiti. You know, Ecuador is in turmoil. Um, Hong Kong, Argentina, Turkey, Mexico, the USA, France, I could go on and on. But that's not what we're here to talk about today, is it? We're here to talk about being becoming financially independent, becoming financially literally free. Um, how to become your own central bank, how to become your own bank. That's what we're here to talk about. You know, first of all, the first thing that you should do out there is educate yourself. After you watch this video, I would highly suggest that you start, you know, clicking on some of the featured channels that I have literally on my channel, whether it's Mike Maloney, whether it's Gregory Manorino, um, even Peter Schiff. Um, there's just so many people out there, you know, Andreas Antonopoulos, so on and so forth. So that you can really start understanding what the hell is going on. Because to the average Joe, when I tell them, hey, you should become your own bank. Most people are like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Why would I do that? It doesn't even make any sense. And then, of course, when you tell them, it's like, whoa, the reason you should become your own bank is because the bank is charging you X, Y, Z money, you know, just to keep your money in there. Um, you know, banks are always stealing from you. Banks are evil. You know, whatever. You know, the banks can freeze your money. The banks don't take, you know, don't let you take out um, the money you want. Um, the banks control this. The bank. But And then everybody's always say like, yeah, but... We all got to use the bank. We all have, no, no, we don't have any other choice but to have money in the bank. I mean, where else am I going to keep it? Under my bed? You know, that whole situation. And granted, you know, when you're telling people to, you know, literally trade in their dollars for physical gold or silver, all right, um, you, you can, you know, understand, you know, uh, where keeping these coins these stacks of coins is a lot harder than initially thought because again right now it could be like hey you got a hundred thousand dollars why do you have it in the bank it could disappear overnight which is true it really could and then it's like well you know that same person will ask who's like whoa where the hell am i going to keep a hundred thousand dollars worth of coins you know some people bury it in their backyard some people bury it in the middle of nowhere whatever that's not the point you know, that's why we also have this stuff called Bitcoin as well, because it serves as a digital representation of this stuff so that you can keep $100,000 in, in a USB drive about the size of one of these coins and about the same weight, about an ounce, give or take. All right. Now, in this episode, I'm not here to tell you how to get rich quick. This episode is not about, you know, learning how to, you know, invest money, learning how to make your money grow. It's none of that. It's none of that at all. In fact, it's, it's more about how to become financially independent from the system itself. Now, granted, I am far removed from the system. Even though I am in the system, I'm in the banking system, I'm in the system, we all are in the system. The reality is, is that I barely use that system. And I think a lot of you guys are in that same position because if you out there have a bank account, um, which we all have to have a bank account, but if your bank account is usually only with a couple bucks in it, then again, you know, you, you pretty much are your own bank already. I mean, seriously. And the fact that, you know, most of us would rather keep the money on us than keep it inside the bank because if you just keep $100 in the bank, they charge you a few bucks just to take it out and so on and so forth. And so, you know, that's why when uh, people are talking about fees or talk about other things when it comes to gold, silver, or Bitcoin, it's a little different, you know, because to me, it's like, you know, we all got to have some sort of savings and that's what these things are. But anyways, 
I'm trying to, let's not get off topic here. We're, we're just literally just talking about the fact and how you can start going down the path of becoming your own bank. Listen guys, let's take a little bit of a history lesson, okay, real quick. The reason that banks are as powerful as they are today is because about a little over 100 years ago, um, the United States of America, we're just going to go with the U.S., but this happened all over the world in some points or another, okay? Um, and henceforth, you know, why the birth of central banks came about. Hey guys, before I get too deep into the episode, I just realized I made a verbal flub, like right before I made this cut here. Um, literally, when I was talking, when I'm talking about central banking, I'm, I'm not talking about like, uh, oh, this is how central banking got started, period. It's just how it got started. Well, the last phase, this last hundred year phase, how central banking has taken hold of the US economy in the last hundred, hundred, little over a hundred years, okay? I'm not talking about the history of banking or central banking that started at that time because we all know that banking and central banking has been with us for a very very long time the reason i use the example of the united states in the last hundred plus years describing you know the whole banking situation is just because again i like i always talk about cycles all these things keep going in cycles and cycles and cycles and this is just the last example and one that you know, most of us uh, can relate with because most of you guys, I'm guessing, are Americans. By the way, if you're not, leave down in the comments. I would love to know where you're from, all right? I represent Florida. Where do you represent? All right, back to the show. The, real, the, the reality was that literally up until the central banks were ruling the world, all we really had per community were just community banks. Now, the thing was that the, a lot of the, you know people would keep their money in the community banks but a lot of times these banks you know would go bankrupt or um, they go yeah literally they just you know go out of business and once they did that you know once one of these banks would go out of business it would they would literally take all the money that the people invested in the bank with them again it's not too different than right now all right it's just FYI but you know, really what, what would happen, you know, back in the late 1800s, you know, give or take, just to give you a little perspective, historical perspective, what always happened was that most people, you know, they kept their, you know, wealth, they kept their wealth in gold or silver. You know, hence, you know, that's why you would see them with jewelry, with gold teeth, whatever, you know what I mean? There was always something in which they kept their gold or silver safe with them. You know, like, again, you had to kill the motherfucker in order to get their gold or silver. Um, but and regardless, uh, most people would just keep them in coins or some sort of bullion, some sort of, uh, you know, um, like a bar or whatever. And that's what they would transact with. Now, again, you know, most people use had, had these coins and, you know, smaller coins and smaller denominations and weights and so on and so forth. And that's what, you know, most people would trade with and especially silver over gold. But the, from what would happen was that as people started uh individuals started uh, acquiring wealth and uh, started acquiring a lot of these they they just did not feel safe keeping them in their house anymore and as you guys just think about the wild wild west or that kind of an environment it's like again you know if you have a lot of these coins uh who's going to protect you you gotta pay someone to protect you or you gotta put them somewhere and pay someone or or, or, or some or, or you know put them in some sort of bank and then this bank would incentivize you to keep it there, all right? And that was the only way really, you know, for you to, you know, keep your wealth. And and that's it. And so then, you know, what would happen is that like a lot of these community banks after a while, what would happen is that like either they, either they just accrued a lot of these coins, a lot of real wealth. And then what would happen is that first of all, you, you would, you know, in order for, for um, the economy to transact e more easy, easier, you know, people would uh, trade in these coins for the paper money, the paper dollars. All right, here, let's take out a few of these so we can add a little more, you know, context to this stuff. You know, so what you would do is that like, you know, eventually, you know, you you, you had a big large stack of these, you had a lot of these, but you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to, you know, carry a lot of wealth in these heavy coins. And especially if you're traveling on horseback or whatever the hell it is, you know, all around the country or from point A to point B. So, 
you know, these places called banks started incentivizing people to give them their gold or silver, and then they would give them this stuff. So now think about it, you know what I mean? Like one of these, okay, could, you know, would be traded for one of these, okay? And let's just say that you had 10 of these, which would weigh a lot, well, they could just give you one of these, which did not weigh that much, you follow? And so, you know, that was one of the incentives that, you know, these banks used, you know, to get people to join the bank, all right? Was that they offered that safety and security because how it would work beforehand was that, um, you know, you if you lost these pieces of paper, you could still go to the bank and the bank, you know, you proved to them that you were you, which, you know, it wasn't really that hard. You proved to them that they were you. And even though you might have lost these, these paper IOUs, they would you would still have access to this. All right. And that's how it was, you know, because this was the real money. This was the real wealth. These were just like IOUs. That's it. And so everybody eventually just started agreeing that this is what what you know they would transact them instead of this because it was just easier for everybody and eventually as um you know uh you know the system started getting implemented um all these banks every once in a while you know what would happen was that like um several things you know one of the things would be that they would just sometimes disappear overnight and all of a sudden you know people were stuck with these and they lost all of this and then, you know, there'll be like a panic and then people are like, oh my God, these things are worthless. They wanted this, but it was already too late and okay. Or there would be some sort of economic situation, you know, whether it was in the community, in the city, in the, in the municipal, what is it, in the, in the state, in the country. And people would go on bank runs, meaning that, you know, all of a sudden these things started to lose value quickly. People understood that, so they would run to the bank Okay, in order to exchange these for this again, and by the time they would get there, the banks would close or done. Or again, and again, you know, you can watch this in movies like um, It's a Wonderful World, I think it is, or I forgot what the, the name of that. You know, that movie that they play during Christmas every single year. I think it's a Wonderful Life or a Wonderful World or whatever, a Wonderful Life. Anyways, you know, with Scrooge or whatever the hell that is. You know, it. Literally, you know, that's what was happening back then. So what, what happened was that like with time, these central banks that were already in power, they started coming, you know, to places like the United States and they started offering saying, hey, look, these community banks are not reliable. You know, everyone, you know, overnight you could lose everything. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna implement this system of central banking all across the nation. So that just in case some one of, this, one of these banks disappears, you're, it's okay, you're insured. You know, we'll make sure that these things, you know, will, you know, are still gonna be worth something to some, some other bank and we'll, we'll give you this. And you know, most people were like, oh, okay, that's a great idea. And they signed up for that, which was a major mistake. You know, uh, Woodrow Wilson was the, fine, was the guy that, you know, finally gave the final order to allow this stuff, but again, I digress, you know, that's, uh, you know, another history lesson. You know, I'm just trying to give you a quick history on, on the banking situation. And so eventually, um, you know, people, they, they just, everyone was using these, but they knew that really what they were using was this. And then literally in a, in a, in a time span of 100 years, if you want more context to this, please just watch Mike Maloney and the history of money, the hidden secrets of money for way, it's a humongous documentary, many, many hours long that will tell you everything in exact detail. But anywho, eventually people just started using these, even though they were, they knew that it was this. And as time went on, about a hundred years, you know, people just forgot about these, you know, gold and silver, and then this is the money. And again, you know, a lot more complications started coming about, like in the 70s with Nixon, and then creating the petrol dollar, okay? And eliminating gold and silver altogether, all right? And, um, you know, and that's where we are now, where all we have is this. This is the only value, okay? These things are, the governments and the banks all tell us that these things have absolutely zero value, but if you look at who has the most gold and silver in the world, you're gonna look at governments and banks, especially banks, definitely governments. But those are the two major entities that have the most gold and silver in the world. Yet they're always telling you not to buy these things. 
So when I tell you to become, or when you're always hearing out there, how, you know, you gotta become your own central bank, it starts with education and knowing what this really means. Because what's going on is that right now you're trusting other people with your money. And you're always gonna be trusting other people with your money. And that should never be the case. You should only trust you with your money. That's it. And that's the problem, you know what I mean? Most, most of us now, you know, we just give it to the bank and let the bank take care of it and let the government take care of it. Let big, you know, brother, you know, help us out with these, you know, complicated things. But the reality is, is that the people that have money, that have power, the people that rule the world, they know exactly what the f fuck is worth money. Yeah, this thing right here that broke the floor, didn't break the coin, all right? These things, all right? Gold and silver. That's really what's worth something. And now we have a new paradigm shift, with it, which is Bitcoin. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. We're just talking about the fact that you got to become your own bank. So how do you become your own bank? Easy. You trade this bullshit in for this. That's it. Either whatever you can afford. If you can afford Bitcoin, you get Bitcoin. If you can afford silver, everyone can afford silver. You get silver. If you can afford gold, you get gold. If you can afford all three, get all three, all right? But definitely get at least one, all right? And um, see, right now, one of these coins, pure silver, something that is used in every electronic on the planet, something that is used uh, everywhere. It's, 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 you know, again, I don't wanna go into all the science behind silver, but silver is one of the most important elements on planet Earth to us humans. And especially, you know, when it comes to like, you know, everything that we see around us, it's silver in it. So how the hell is it that this one ounce coin of pure silver is only worth around 16 to 17 dollars? When, if you go to McDonald's or you go to the movie, if you go to McDonald's, you're, you're probably spending 16, 17 dollars. So how the, how, how is that even? How, sway. And yet, you know, th these pieces of paper are worth so much more. Literally, a $20 bill, which barely gets you anything in the U.S. anymore, you can buy a whole silver coin and then some. Okay? You can, again, you can, you can get, download the Cash App and, and buy some Bitcoin. Buy 20 bucks worth of Bitcoin. Alright? You can go to the, your, your, your local gold and silver dealer and if you want to, you know, go big, you know, big daddy, big, big daddy baller, and you want to buy some gold, you can buy a whole ounce of gold now for 1,500 bucks. Now, I know that sounds like a lot to some people, but to some people, you're like 1,500, really, that's it? That's all? You know, and again, when people are wondering why Bitcoin is priced so high, it's because it has not had the chance to get manipulated as deep as this. And again, we're not, I'm not here to talk, we're just bouncing around things because I talk about a lot of these things in depth in, on my channel, so if you want to know more, just look at my other videos. But you know, the reality is, is, is that right now is the time for you to buy gold, buy silver, buy Bitcoin, because that is how you become your own central bank. Every, and again, if you want more context to this, again, I've already told you guys more than once how to, you know, get more information. Start with Mike Maloney and the hidden secrets of money. But anyways, every single day, every single second, this loses value. I'm using these because I'm in Mexico, but it's dollar bills, whatever. But anyways, every single second, this loses value. It lost value. It just lost value. It's losing value. It's lost value. It's, now, something like this, or gold, or Bitcoin, actually gains value every single day. Even though this might be dropping in value, Bitcoin might be dropping in value, gold might be dropping in value, the reality is that it's actually gaining value. What happens is, is that there's a weird uh, little, you know, um, paradigm uh, situation here and we're, um, in which um, they print more and more of these every single day and so the more they print you know again the you know the less the less valuable they are but it's like you need more and more of these to buy this but they offset this because they print paper versions of this or again now they're even starting to print paper versions of Bitcoin and and then they inflate the silver, gold, and Bitcoin market to make them worth even less. But if you were to only get, if you were to take away all the paper derivatives, the paper versions of silver and gold out of the market, a gold coin, I mean a silver coin would not be worth around $16, $17. It would be worth closer to $800.
And it's kind of like the same thing that goes with gold. You know, gold would not be worth $1,500 for a coin. It would be probably worth $20,000, $50,000. If this already, if Bitcoin already got, is, is already around 8,000, it's been at 10, it was just at 14 a month ago, and it was definitely, we know we got to 20K, and we're always talking about we're gonna get to 100K, and in some cases, a lot of people are saying we're gonna get to a million. Well, again, that's how we're gonna get there is because that Bitcoin is priced in this and what's going to happen is is that there's going to be less of that and too much of this all right and the more and then that's it you know what i mean it's just like when you go to venezuela or you go to any hyperinflation place you buy a cup of coffee and a cup of coffee costs you a million dollars it's not because the coffee is worth more it's just because these are worth less so you need more of these to purchase the same thing for the okay so when you when you when we are going to when we hit that point of one million dollars per bitcoin it's because these things are worth absolutely nothing all right and they're already worth worth absolutely nothing and that's what i'm trying to get you, you guys to understand because right now the reason that these things are still viable as opposed to bitcoin gold or silver is because the majority of the people around the earth still put their value still think that these things are what what are worth money these they still think that this is uh, the value the value chain the value the, the wealth but as these, you know, every single day become more and more worthless and people become aware of it because they, again, you know, this doesn't buy them what it used to and everything just gets more expensive. That's when they quickly realize that, you know, this is losing their money, you know, losing their wealth and something like this is actually retaining their wealth. It's protecting themselves against inflation, protecting themselves against the insanity that is our governments, okay? And um, the misbending and the mis, you know, allocation of funds. Because again, why is it that they have the ability to spend trillions of dollars right now, QE6, to bail out the banks, to pay for the military industrial complex, to do all of these horrible things around the world, but you know, there's no money for fixing the roads, there's no money for um, helping the poor, there's no money for you, you gotta pay more taxes, you know, things are falling apart even further, and so on and so forth. And what are they telling us to do? You know, what are they telling us that they would, what are they telling us that they're, how they're gonna fix it? Oh, by printing more money, raising the minimum wage, giving you more money, and so on and so forth. So again, is that really a solution? No, it's not. It's a band-aid to the problem. And so if you all of a sudden are sitting pretty with some of these, you know, stacks of silver, some Bitcoin and some gold, if you're just sitting there and, you're, and right now you're trading these worthless pieces of crap for things like this, then by the time that the whole thing comes full circle and the fucking shit hits the fan, well, guess what? These things are gonna get to the real value while people are gonna be scrambling to, you know, probably, I mean, they're not even gonna be able to use this as toilet paper. Okay, in some cases, in some countries, they burn this for, for heat. And when you're burning millions of dollars just to heat up, and then all of a sudden this one coin that you bought many moons ago for 20 bucks is now worth a fortune, you know, you're gonna see the value of your investment. But that's the thing, most people don't see that far ahead. They only see as far as, you know, they can put their hand out. And that's the problem. Most people can only see as far as they can put their hand out. Yes, pun intended, all right? So that's the thing, guys. When I talk about communism, when I talk about big government, when I talk about all the things that I talk about, it's basically always coming full circle to the fact that right now we have no rights, we have no independence, we have no nothing. We have to follow the rules of the banking cabal. If we don't, then guess what? We are set aside to just either A, become a prisoner in the prison industrial complex, or B, just a, you know living on the street and just are not part of the economy, or C, you just don't exist. You just don't exist. If you're poor enough in the US, you can't even get a bank account. Henceforth, why you see things like the Cash App gaining so much success. Because if people really knew out there what the fuck the Cash App really was, it's just a bank account. It's, it's banking the unbanked. And this guy is trying to do that. Jim, you know, um, Jack Dorsey is trying to create a platform so that people can be banked in a world that we all need to be banked. Because right now, even banks are shooting themselves in the foot by not giving bank accounts to the people that need it. You know, and then so what are people doing? 
They're becoming their own banks because they don't have a choice. Then they're just literally just going straight to Bitcoin. I'm just trying to educate yourself. I'm trying to educate you guys more on what all this really means and what you guys can really do about it. Okay, so please, you know, I, that's it. This video has gone very long, so I'm going to end it here. But guys, it all starts with education. So educate yourselves as much as possible. Okay, and once you do that, once you figure it out, then you'll know exactly what to do. You already know what to do, which is buy silver, buy gold, buy Bitcoin. Okay, that's it. I mean, that's it. Once you really, really understand why Bitcoin was in invented, why it was created, it was, it's a digital version of gold. It's, it's because gold and, and silver have been hijacked from us. So we needed something else, something for the digital age. And again, there's a, the Bitcoin rabbit hole. We're just looking at it from the outside. You already know we can go this so deep, you're never going to see the bottom of it. But the point, really, the end of the, you know, the whole point to Bitcoin at the end of the day, that it was created in order to defeat the monopoly that these banks have on us. Okay? It's in order to get rid of this. Okay? And I'm not talking, and again, it's just what, what this has turned into today. If this was how it was back in the day, like where it was traded for this, you know, it meet one of these meant one of these or one of these equals one Bitcoin, then okay, we're, we're okay, we're good, we need these. I think that we're still gonna be a long ways before we get rid of these things. But right now, these things are backed by absolutely nothing but debt. And that's not the way it should be. Every single human on Earth is born with debt. Every single human on Earth has debt. That makes us debt slaves because we have to spend the rest of our eternity paying off a debt which most of us didn't even accrue. All right, so again, this is why we trade this in for this. Because on top of everything else, if you do this right, if you buy this right, from the right in the right uh, manner, the government will never fucking know. Nobody will ever know how much of this you have. Well, if you keep it in this, oh, everybody knows how much you have. And again, I know Bitcoin is traceable to a certain extent, but again, if you know what you're doing, you can have millions and millions and billions of dollars in Bitcoin and nobody will fucking know, all right? You can have a million addresses. You can do a bunch of things. But again, I got to end this video. It's getting way too long. So guys, thank you so much for watching today. I want to give a big, I want to give a real big shout out to all my patrons. I want to give a big shout out to every single one of you guys out there that sends me Bitcoin, sends me Digibyte, sends me money on the Cash App. You know, all kinds of, every, every single one of your contributions is beyond, uh, you know, helpful. And it helps me keep doing this every single day. Because some days it gets a little hard, don't get me wrong. And I have to choose between, you know, am I going to do a job and not focus on these videos and so on and so forth. And again, you already know, I'm, I go hard or go home every single day. But every single one, of, every time you guys send me a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever the hell you send me. It's literally to help me keep me off the streets and to help keep me in front of the camera. All right. So if you enjoy this content, you want to see more of this content, please, by all means, you already know what to do. Hit the likes, hit the subscribe button. You know, don't forget to hit that bell icon. Join the Discord group. Go to joseartega.com. Buy some t-shirts. Help support the whole thing. Help me feed my horse. And uh, together, we're going to be able to do this, all right? So please, don't ever think that you're, you are not helping me or impacting me. Because even if you're just watching this episode all the way through, or even watching a commercial, you're helping a lot, all right? And especially if you share this information. That's literally the most important thing that I want you to do. If you do one thing, is just share all this information, all right? Guys, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. and. Please stay awesome. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys mañana. Same bat time, same bat channel.